Hello everyone and welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today I'm going to do a basic tutorial for you of the Texas Instruments TI-30X-2S scientific calculator. This is a very standard scientific calculator. Um, it uses the equation operating system which means you're going to plug in expressions and they're going to show up on the screen and then you press enter to evaluate them. You can contrast that with the algebraic operating system that you'll find on your cell phone calculators for example which does one algebraic operation at a time and shows you the result after the operation is completed. Sometimes you place the number inside the calculator and then you press the operation afterwards. This is much different than that. We're going to get whole expressions out and we're going to press enter to evaluate them. Now this is a really good run-of-the-mill scientific calculator which works well for algebra classes or your integrated math 1 or math 2 course. Um, it's very uh, basic and has the basic uh, scientific functions that we need and so I'm going to go through that with you and how the calculator works. So first to turn the calculator on of course it's this button down here. When the calculator is on you see the little uh, blinking rectangle. This is a liquid crystal display of course in the top left corner. You also see a little notation of a few settings. Um, DEG down here this represents that you are in degree mode, which I'll talk about in a second. And this arrow up here uh, refers to the memory of the calculator, which I will go through later. So let's test this calculator's order of operations. Let's make sure it knows to multiply before it adds, for example. Let's try 7 times 8 plus 3. Notice how it did not evaluate anything yet, but has written an expression based on my inputs on the screen. If I want to evaluate this expression, which we uh, hope it would do the multiplication before the addition, we would press enter. And we get 59, that's correct. 7 times 8, 56, plus 3, 59. So this calculator is doing that correctly. Now this calculator handles negatives differently than your cell phone algebraic operating system style calculator. So if we would like uh, a negative sign we have to use this button which has a little negative sign in parentheses versus the subtraction button. If I try and create an expression using uh, the subtraction button as a negative sign such as negative 7 you can see that immediately it uh, puts an A and S on the screen which means it thinks you are subtracting something from your previous answer and so it does not do what you'd expect. If you do want negative 7, for example, you would type the negative button and then uh, 7. That will give you negative 7. So negative 7 times 8 plus 3, for example, if we want to do that calculation again, we should get negative 53. So these are how negatives are handled. Now to clear something from the screen, we would press the clear button, like this and it will revert back to the main screen. Now, this calculator has a lot of features that allow you to edit your expression before you evaluate it. So let's say we type in negative 7 times 8 plus 3 and we want to edit our input expression. Well you can easily do that with these left and right arrows. You can move across your expression to the left or to the right and we can edit it. Let's say instead of a 7 I wanted to put a 9 here. Well if I make sure the 7 is highlighted with the blinking cursor I can overwrite anything with just pressing the, the uh, button for the value that I wanted there instead. So now I have negative 9 times 8 plus 3. Now let's say you didn't want to overwrite something you wanted to insert something. So let's say I wanted this to be negative 8 not 8. In order to do that you have to press second delete. Now what does the second button do? The second button here is like a shift button. Now it's hard to see but there are little tiny expressions above the regular buttons on this calculator. And so it's like a whole nother set of buttons for all of these function buttons, the black buttons on the calculator and maybe some white ones like these down here. 
So above the DEL button for delete, you see INS, and that means insert. So if I press second, I know that the second button is depressed, so I'm in shift mode when I see a little second symbol right here in the corner of the calculator. So if I press delete now, it makes eight blink in and out. What this means is not that eight is going away, it means that I can insert anything before the eight, such as a minus sign. Now we see negative nine times negative eight plus three. And I can keep inserting things in front of the eight until I press an arrow button to get out. I can go to any part of the expression I want and I can press delete to delete um, figures in the expression, digits or symbols in the expression. I can press enter when I'm done. Now this calculator has a really nice feature when it comes to memory. The memory of the calculator is um, uh, accessed by pressing the up arrow. See the up arrow here? That tells me I have memory in the calculator. So if I press that, I first go back to the calculation expression I just did. But if I keep going, I can go back in time to previous expressions that I've done. And I can go down arrow to go uh, to a more recent expression. And I can choose to edit that expression and change things and press enter. Another memory feature is called ANS. So this feature is automatically um, utilized when I press a button for an algebraic operation before I put a number, such as the plus sign. So what this is doing is it is accessing the previous answer from my previous expression and I'm gonna add something to it. Or I can subtract or what have you and get my next number. Now another way to use answers, if you like your previous answer, you need to use it for something else. Let's say you wanted to um, take your previous result and multiply it by 69. So I can press second minus sign. You see ANS there? That also um, generates your previous answer, which in this case was negative 159. We can press enter to get the result. This calculator is quite powerful, can handle large numbers, but not as large as, for example, a graphing calculator. You can check my TI-83 Plus tutorial video to see a more powerful graphing calculator that can handle large numbers. But this is plenty powerful enough for an algebra class or, like I said, a Math 1 or Math 2 course. Next, I would like to show you some basic setting buttons on this calculator, because as you can see, there's no button called mode in which most of the settings live. There is a setting button up here called DRG and this allows you to change how the calculator handles angles in degree mode or radian mode. These are different types of angles and so normally we switch back and forth between degrees and radians and this is used for the trig buttons like sine, cosine, and tangent which I'll get to a little later. So in addition to that if you press second DRG, you can reconfigure how the calculator handles numbers. It is set to FLO, which stands for floating point numbers. So these are lots of digits where you can move the decimal point around, and that's a floating point number. Scientific numbers can be uh, accessed through the setting here, and engineering settings are um, set there for numbers. Now, if you want to reset where you want your um, the mode calculated, you just move the arrows left or right. I'm going to keep things on floating point for this tutorial video because that's the setting you will most likely use. And to exit a menu, you press clear. Now if I were to adjust what type of angles I use, for example, this DEG down here would change. So let's say I switch to radians by pressing the left arrow, um, excuse me, the right arrow and pressing enter. You can see now RAD is highlighted instead of DEG, so you know you're in radian mode. So let me show you a few other basic operations you would do with a scientific calculator, such as exponents, radicals, and scientific notation. So let's start with the exponents. If you simply want to square a number, you would place the number in the calculator first and then press this button, X squared, and you'd see a little 
2 show up as an exponent, and you press enter, you get the known result 25. If you'd like to raise a number to a higher power than 2, you have to press the following button. So let's put the number in that we want to raise to a power, and then you press this button. This is called caret. Now, caret shows up like this as a superscript, but the number afterwards, such as 9, does not. That 9 is the exponent, but it does not show as a superscript like the uh, previous squared button does, or the caret itself. As you can see, this calculator can handle quite large numbers. Now, if you'd like to do uh, a square root, there's a special shift button for that right above x squared. You can sort of faintly see the radical symbol there. So the correct way to do it is to press second x squared and then place what you want to take the square root of, like so. Now you see it has a parenthesis there. You can choose to um, close or not close that parenthesis if this is the last part of your expression. I recommend you get used to closing open parentheses because you find sometimes that you need to add more things afterwards. In this case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to press enter on the square root of 25. And we can see that it is 5. Now what if I want to take the cube root or the fourth root or any higher order root than the square root of a number? Well, I will have to press the second caret button. You see this symbol on top of that button. Now, this calculator requires you to put what degree root you want before you press that button. So as you can see, if I don't press anything, it is going to treat um, your previous answer as that degree, and we definitely don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to press, let's say we want the cube root of 8. We press the 3 for the cube root part, press second caret to get the cube root f function, and then don't ask me why they don't put parentheses, but they don't. You can either choose to put one in, the parentheses right here, or leave it out. Since we're doing a simple number 8, we don't really need parentheses. So this will evaluate the cube root of 8, 2, as we would come to expect. Now, how do we do scientific notation with this calculator? Well, this is a neat scientific calculator. There's actually two ways to do it. The log button the uh, the the second shift feature of the log button you can see a little 10 to the x power so if we try that let's do 5 times 10 to the 6 I'm gonna put the 5 I'm gonna put times and then second log it gives me this which looks like 10 to the power of and then we just place the 6 in there and as I said get in the habit of closing your parentheses as you can see it, it pops out 5 million there's another way to do scientific notation, however, and that is this x to the negative 1 button. The second feature of that is EE. -E. Now, EE -E is shorthand for times 10 to the, which is really nice because it actually saves you time. So if I want to do 5 times 10 to the 6 with this set of buttons, I do 5, second, x negative 1. You see a little E there which means times 10 to the, and then I press the exponent I want for 10, 6, and I get 5 million again. So that's a little shorter way to do it, and that's what the E stands for, times 10 to the. Now let's check out some trigonometry functions on this calculator. As you can see, it has sine, cosine, and tangent, and above those buttons you see inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. Now this is where your angle type matters. If you want to be in radian mode, we would have to press DRG and switch over to RAD. I'm going to leave that in degree mode right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the sine of 45 degrees. I don't have to put the degree symbol, it already knows I'm in degrees. I'll close the parentheses for good measure and I will get this crazy decimal. So like I'd expect. So that's the sine of 45 degrees. Now I can do inverse trig functions by pressing second and then the trig button. So now I can calculate the inverse sine of something. How about 8 over 10? 
Remember, for inverse trig functions, we are plugging in ratios of sides and getting angles out. So when I'm in degree mode, it will give me the angle that should be the inverse sine of this value in degrees, which is 53 degrees. Now if I switch to radian mode, like so, and I evaluate the same expression, I will get something completely different because now I'm getting the same angle in radians rather than degrees. Now what if you wanted to do a reciprocal trig function like cosecant, for example, which is the reciprocal of sine. That's not the same thing as inverse sine. It's a reciprocal trig function. You would have to do the following. One divided by sine for example, 45 degrees, actually 45 radians. If you realize you're in the wrong mode, even in the middle of an expression being created, you can go to DRG button and switch to your proper mode. So this will evaluate the cosecant of 45 degrees in this calculator. Now, there is a special button here, which I neglected to discuss when we were discussing exponents, and that's the x negative 1 button. That will evaluate the reciprocal of your expression. For example, 6 to the negative 1 should give us the equivalent of 1 over 6. And that's what this decimal is. Now, we know that these 6s go on forever for 1 sixth. But you can see the calculator has rounded. Because even though it's a floating point, uh, it's on the floating point setting for numbers, it doesn't have an infinite number of digits. As you can see, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 digits to work with by default. And that's plenty for what you need it for in an algebra class, like I've said before. But I just want you to know its limitations. It's going to round that last tenth digit. Now, this calculator has a specific button just for pi. Whether you're doing geometry or trigonometry and you need pi, you have that button right here. The calculator can evaluate pi for you if you press pi and then press enter to 10 digits, which is very nice. So let's say we wanted to use pi in a, for example, circumference calculation. Let's say the radius of our circle is 7, and we want to calculate the circumference of the circle. We would do, of course, 2 times pi times r. Now, since pi is a symbol for a number, we can multiply it by just placing it next to another number. So this would evaluate 2 times pi, and then we want the radius to be 7. So as you can see, 2 times pi times 7, that's 2 pi r for this particular circle, and it evaluates it for us, 43.98 and so on. Now you can use pi in the trig functions as well, but as you know, if you've done any trig, you need to be in radian mode, because pi is an angle commonly used in radians. So let's say we wanted to evaluate the tangent of pi. We would just press tangent and then pi, making sure we're in radian mode, we get zero. Now let me show you how this calculator handles things that can't be evaluated, such as one divided by zero. So if you happen to do something that can't be evaluated, the calculator is already pre-programmed to give you the following result, divide by zero error. Now, there's another type of error called syntax error, which can result from you using the wrong or incorrect notations that can't be read by the calculator. Such as, for example, let's say you're typing and you, your finger slips and you press the parenthesis button and you don't close the parenthesis or put anything after it. You get a syntax error. Now, if you want to figure out what happened, you just press clear on there and it will take you to the expression and you can find your error and fix it. Of course, it's showing you that you need something inside that parenthesis. Let's say instead we did five times six and then we closed the parenthesis but forgot to open it. Of course, we will get another syntax error. If we press clear, it'll take us directly to that spot where there is an error. And we can, of course, say, oh yes, I didn't open that parenthesis, but I don't need it in this case. So I'll just delete it and then it will evaluate what we're trying to evaluate there. All right, guys, that's a basic intro look into this calculator. There's plenty more features the calculator has, but those will be for another time as they're more advanced. So thanks, you guys, for watching. This is Falconator 
signing out.